President Biden is keeping diplomatic lines of communication open as Israel expands its war effort in Gaza. The president spoke directly to the emir of Qatar Tuesday about the situation in Gaza and the potential for a permanent ceasefire. But Biden's main focus continues to be working towards the release of the 129 hostages that are still being held by Hamas in Gaza. At the same time, a top ally of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu met with senior U.S. officials in Washington, D.C. They discussed the next phase of the war, minimizing civilian casualties and a post-conflict Gaza. I am joined now by senior advisor to Benjamin Netanyahu, Ambassador Mark Regev. Thank you so much for coming on the program. I want to talk to you about this meeting. Uh, the president met with Netanyahu's close advisor, Ron Dermer for uh, quite a long time, for hours long meeting at the White House yesterday. Can you give us any insight into what came out of that meeting? I can only tell you, Sarah, and it's good to be speaking with you, that, that Israeli-U.S. ties have never been stronger. We've never had such an intense level of communication, of coordination. Uh, since the beginning of this crisis, President Biden has been there. He's, uh, 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 first of all, you know, painted a clear picture from a moral point of view that Hamas, he said, is sheer evil and must be destroyed. And he's uh, asserted and reasserted again and again Israel's right to defend itself. He said it's not only our right, it's our obligation to act against Hamas to protect our people. And of course, he's given us important diplomatic support at the United Nations. And more than that, he's given us the tools to finish the job. He's made sure that we have the ammunition that we require to win this war. But Ambassador, one of the things that Biden has been really stressing uh, and the administration is trying to lower the intensity of the fight, ratchet down the number of people who are being killed, civilians in Gaza. Where are you on that front? Where is Israel and the United States on that front? Are they on the same page? Definitely, definitely on the same page. We don't see the civilian population of Gaza as, as the target of our operation. Hamas, that brutal terrorist organization that murdered Israelis on October 7th, that raped, that beheaded, uh, that massacred the young people at the music festival, that organization, the Hamas terrorists are our enemy. The, the, the people of Gaza, we are making a maximum effort to get them out of the line of fire, to get them out of dangerous areas where we know there's going to be difficult combat, and of course, to facilitate humanitarian aid. Ambassador, it's been really, really difficult um, looking at the pictures, of course, of what happened, obviously, on October 7th, but also what is going on in Gaza with the, the Hamas-run uh, Palestinian Ministry for Health saying uh, that there are more than 20,000 people who have been killed, most of them women and children. What does Israel have to say and what will it do to try and stem that tide to stop killing so many civilians? So every civilian casualty is a tragedy, and we don't want to see a single one. And we're really making a maximum effort not to see civilians caught up in the crossfire between the Israeli Defense Forces and the Hamas terrorists. But it's very, very difficult because Hamas, as you know, has orchestrated this policy of using Gazan civilians as human shields. They've put their military machine under uh, urban neighborhoods, under hospitals, under schools, under mosques, even under UN facilities. So we are trying to be as surgical as we can be in a very difficult combat environment. But once again, I stress, we don't want to see uh, civilian casualties. And I can tell you, my information is that civilian casualties are going down, and that's a good thing. Of course, the numbers you get from Hamas, which are most likely exaggerated, but those numbers uh, do not make a distinction between combatants and non-combatants. If you tell me we killed 200 people yesterday in Gaza and they're all terrorists, I'll tell you, good. We want to get those terrorists. We want to find those people responsible uh, for the October 7th massacre. But civilians, every time a civilian is caught up in crossfire from Israel's point of view, it's a tragedy. It shouldn't have happened. And we know, though, that there are a lot of civilians who have been have been killed. I do want to ask you about the hostage situation because the Emir of Qatar yesterday uh, spoke uh, with they've, they've been speaking with Biden. They're speaking on the efforts of trying to secure the release of all remaining hostages held by Hamas. Where do things stand right now? Because it seems at this moment um, that there is a real question as to whether that is ever going to happen. So once again, I want to start off by praising President Biden, who helped us facilitate the release of over 100 people in November. And he's obviously continuing trying to, to achieve a, a release of hostages, and that's a good thing. The Qatar government, uh, uh, of course, hosts Hamas, 
They have the senior Hamas leadership sits there in their capital, Doha. And uh, for many people, they don't understand this. If you claim to be a member of the civilized world, how can you host these terrorists, these Hamas murderers, these killers, these, these beheaders? Uh, uh, and the government of Qatar answers, well, we can bring benefits to the world by having this relationship with Hamas. So we say, okay, let's see what benefits you can bring. Can you bring about another formula that brings our hostages home? We want every last one of our hostages out. You know, we're speaking to the families of the, of the hostages, and they are going through living hell because they know who Hamas is. Uh, they saw what Hamas did on October 7th, the way they brutalized our people, the way they killed randomly, the way they burned people alive. Uh, and the hostages that got out in November have been reporting back, and some of them have spoken on CNN, and they've spoken about psychological and physical abuse. So, of course, the families of the hostages are... Are, are rightfully worried about their, their loved ones. And the Israeli government will do everything we can to get those people out as soon as possible. All right, well, I know that Qatar was gonna be a, a big player in this. They have already played a role in getting some of the hostages out. Um, but, I, but I hear you uh, on this sort of the cognitive dissonance is how you're putting it uh, with how Hamas is treated uh, there in Qatar. Mark Regev, there has to be negotiations uh, and that is, what's, that is what has to happen in order for any hostages to be released. Thank you so much for coming on today, appreciate it.